Thanos is, of course, different. And oh, goody. I think he's had it with this series, man. He wants to finish it early. In the top right spawn position, our Red Terran player, Goody. He is once again going for that super sophisticated build order where you build a, a supply depot on 8, then you build a proxy barracks on 8, and then you make a gas on 8 supply. And then you make Reapers. Reapers and Reapers construct a bunker near your enemy's hatchery and hope to win the game. So Lurliam, tell us about this 8-8 eight, eight, eight build and the benefits of doing it. The benefits of doing it is of course trying to uh, punish a Zerg player that goes for a hatchery first. But it's, it's not an automatic win. You have to control your Reapers properly because behind this you have barely no SCVs. Luckily, Maddles gave us some very in-depth analysis <laughs> last game, so I don't have to expand on this too much this time around. I know it's a, a very <laughs> complex issue and a build order that not many here will be able to execute flawlessly as Goody is doing. Yeah, Goody's doing really, really quite nicely at it. He's just like, well, you make your supply depot, hey, you make your barracks. Eight, you make your gas. Eight. Yeah, guys, so this is a bit of a tutorial. The last two yep. games in this showdown have been very educational uh, to some Terran players here. I'm sure if at least one person that is watching right now is going to do this on the ladder tonight. We should all just, like, as soon as this so match is over, just go on 888 on the ladder, regardless of whether we play Terran or not. That would be hilariously good fun. But anyway, as we all get paired against each other as well, as like the mass start of a game, and then there's just a whole ton of people. 888ing each other. But yeah, anyway, Goody is going to give us a tutorial. Can he pull it off better this game than in the previous one? Can he win? We hope so, because that would kick us to game number eight. And more mm. games are more fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how people in chat are calling me. Yeah, he's in Masters, but he's a 4-gator. And someone else is like, isn't 4-gate a out-of-date build already? Yeah, it is. 4-gate doesn't work anymore. But back in the day, when PvP was all about the 4-gates, and 4-gates could win you games versus Terran, 4-gates could win you games versus Zerg, it was like, if you had to pick one build order to be good at, it had to be 4-gate as Protoss, because it could win you games against all matchups. As we see, the Reaper is now going to town in the main base, has been able to kill a worker, and is now going to be microing uh, himself back cannot get himself into a corner. Nope, he's just running around, nice little circles, picking away. Needs to be careful not to get trapped though, because if he gets surrounded, he will die incredibly quickly, but of course the bunker's up. But the good thing for Minuto is he hasn't tried to take an expansion, so that's nice news for him, because it just means that ultimately he's got that rotor on down, he's got Burrow coming, he's going for that probably three rotor aggression we've seen quite a few times this evening, and that's going to let him push forward and just deal with this Reaper very comfortably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is weird, actually. What is he going to do now? He's going home with his Marine, he's going home with his SCV, he's going home with another Marine, and the last Reaper, was it taken out? Did I miss that? No, it's still alive. Where's that? It's in a bunker still. The Marine and the Reaper are still in a bunker. I think he felt that he has done enough damage by forcing the, the hatchery to not go down and therefore delay it immensely. I think he's going to be feeling somewhat secure, but those roaches, man, they're coming out. Two of them currently on the field, more in the production. Three more in production, and even Burrow, wow, that's one of the first time I've seen one base Burrow in Heart of the Swarm. I mean, it used to be a lair tech upgrade, now it's yep. just hatchery, but this is it the is. first time I'm actually going to see it utilized. It's it's a fun little thing to do. We see the bunker is getting taken down, tries to get salvaged, but will not work. Minato takes the expansion. That's a really nice move. And this is why this particular opening is quite viable. Admittedly, there's five roaches rather than three. That mm -hmm. was just a direct response to the fact the bunker was there and Goody and Minato needed to break it quite quickly. But now he's got those five roaches out, he can come and be a real pain. And Widow Mine coming out for Goody though, really smart choice in my opinion. Especially when he doesn't have a complete wall off here. Uh-huh, yeah, the units are coming though, those roaches are coming, and he's gonna have... What is he gonna have in the bunker? He's gonna have about four marines in there with one marine to cover. Ooh, this overlord is gonna go down, but it is pulling the marines out of position. Are they gonna get back into the bunker in time? Run, marines! Marines! Uh-oh, they're stuck in the back, and the roaches are coming through the front. They might just run past this bunker, but there is a widow mine there in a good position, and the roaches, what are they gonna do? They are gonna push up here and run right over the widow mine. That's gonna get a great hit. Wow, fantastic. That was a really, really nice shot for Burrow being utilized quite effectively here already. And if you get these Burrows down nicely, it can be a real pain to deal with this early on for a Terran player because they don't want to use a scan, especially when you spread out the roaches so much. So they just keep burrowing, unburrowing, and generally just being a nightmare to deal with. And that's exactly what we're going to see Minato do here. His natural is just 
completing here. And ultimately that just means that with his natural down, with the fact that he's got these roaches burrowing around everywhere, he can be a complete pain to Goody. And Goody's got to sit back in his base, has got to try and hold it off. And if he tries to do anything too extreme, well, a roach is going to pick off SCVs producing things such as that command center. And just frustrating to death. Super funny to see this. All the roaches are still alive. Those four roaches that we initially saw get into the main base, they're all still alive. There goes a scan, revealing two of them. Uh, one of them is actually going to get outside of scan range and burrow again, but another our dog commander is about to finish up. So still three roaches left alive in the main base. Very creative play here by Minotaur. I really didn't think he was able was going to be able to do this much with only five roaches. It's uh, It's well done. It is very well done, and these, it's, as I said, keeping Goody pinned back. Now a roach is going to go and burrow by the natural, preventing the orbital command from landing, and these sort of things just mean that ultimately it's more scan spend, less mules out. There is the raven on its way, but then that's a raven. It's a big expense to just clear out mm -hmm. a couple of roaches. And behind this Minotaur, he's going up to lair. He's probably going to get roach speed out very quickly and just go for a really aggressive push into the natural, knowing that his opponent can't have that much stuff. No, he can't. He he's been <clears throat> he's been behind, so he's he's not gonna have that much stuff stuff out on the field just yet. Ten roaches. Oh my god, that's a lot of roaches. Is he gonna be super aggressive with this medals? Uh let's take a look at the unit tab. Forty one drones. Hmm. Well he can be really aggressive with it, let's face he's it. Getting because... speed, so Yeah. Yeah, he, can. he, he... There's not many tanks out. Let's face it, there's two tanks. Three will be down by the time those roaches get over. Maybe four. Roach speed will also be completed. The natural base is going to be a nightmare trying to hold that because even if the tanks are up on the high ground, which is most likely where Goody will put them, Minato can just skirt along the bottom edge of the natural base and just mm -hmm. run straight behind the mineral line, delaying denying any mining, picking away at that orbit command from a distance. Not to mention the fact this roach is now blocking the land anyway. That's got to get taken out. It's just delaying everything so long. Work count wise, Minotaur's ahead by 12 on its own. He's got his Spire coming down to transition out of this. Everything's just falling in his favor for the moment. Yeah, Goody is looking quite all right here. He's going to be pushing out Minotaur. Has a lot of roaches out on the field, but what can he really do? This is once again that trademark goody push, only this time around he doesn't have a uh, Banshee, but he has a Raven with his Marine Siege Tank army, and he has he is a little bit more heavy on the Siege Tanks. The Siege Tanks are going to get caught here by the roaches, but the Siege Tanks of course have a good amount of DPS even when they're not in Siege Tank mode. In siege mode, I should actually say. And they actually thwart those roaches, and Minato is in trouble, man. Goody is going to kill that third base. Pretty much for sure. Yeah, this third base is going to go down. But to be honest, I don't think it's a huge issue at the moment for Minato, actually, because let's face it, he's getting a lot more roaches out. He's got his Spire nearly finished as well. In terms of anti-air, there's only 12 Marines. So those Mutas are going to be able to help, especially with the roaches doing some nice damage. The scan goes down, sees all of those roaches, though, and the speed is researched. So that straight away means that Goody should be very cautious because that's the only thing that he's got to be concerned about is getting surrounded or anything like that. Mm hmm Yeah, so that third base now down three Mutalisks on the way. That's scary. Well, not really. But, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a shame. You know, Minato could have actually not produced about half those roaches, and he would have been able to make a scary amount of Mutas, like seven or n even nine Mutas, if he not produced that many roaches. These roaches, I don't think they're going to be that useful anymore in this game, are they? They can be. It all comes down to whether they can engage us. Remember back into the game on Belshia, where... Basically, Minato got all of those tanks running back. Imagine if the same thing happened with these roaches. It would just instantly win the game for him. So mm -hmm. the one thing that these roaches need to do, though, is do something soonish. Because if they don't, then they will become useless fairly quickly. So that's why you've got to make them effective early on. Otherwise, you're just wasting the supply. The muters can try and do something, but there aren't that many on the field. The hydrogen coming down as well. This is probably going to go into the later stages, and judging from that, well, actually, Goody's ahead in the work account. He's got the two mules. He's got his third orbital command up as well. So with all of those things, actually, economically, and going into the later stages, Goody's not in a bad spot. He's not. Is he going to get this hatch over here? No, the muters are going to join up. Wow, that's a ballsy move. He's pulling away all his mutas. Is, is the DPS of one muta actually enough? Yeah, yeah it's going to be enough to kill the uh, the Banshee before it kills the Hatchery. Uh, building Hatchery, not out, live, not out healing a Banshee's damage, but a Banshee doesn't deal enough damage to kill it before a muta kills Ooh, him. Oh, nice little focus down of the mules here with the mutalisks. 
good little amounts of damage done there. No Muta's going down, of course. They heal up so quickly in Heart of the Swarm. They mm -hmm. can just sit back here. The Marines will trap them for a brief moment. Need to be careful. Minotaur don't run it into there. The Viking is also down. We've got more missile tides everywhere. The Raven getting focused. Be -be 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 that is oh, very nicely done. That was really good control there by Goody. Yeah, I called it, man. I was like, PDD, 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 and he did it. He and PDD he stands for Point Defense Drone. Okay, yeah? Okay. Uh, I, I was aware. I you was aware of that. You were aware? I was aware. I never use okay. Point Defense Drones. They annoy me. I don't use Ravens. Ravens annoy me. Yeah, Point Defense Drones, they really don't come into play as much anymore. There was a time uh, in Wings of Liberty that they used to play a pivotal role in, in uh, certain matchups, like absorbing uh, absorbing Stalker shots or versus uh, Zerg players uh, in air battles, in Terran versus Terran. Point Defense Drones used to be like the, the, the end game, all game. If you, the, the guy that had more Point Defense Drones would soak up the most Viking shots and therefore win the late game TBT battle. Ah, uh, good times. So... Now we've, now we've covered PDDs, which are really good. We can see the, the Hive coming down. <laughs> Very nice timing of that Hive, nothing too risky. The fourth base also on its way. Muscular Arguments getting researched. We do already have Groove Spines done. So now we're just back to the point where actually Goody is moving out at around 150 supply. But notice there's two Changelings in with that army from Minato. So he's completely aware of this move out and he's actually positioning his army around the back, potentially for some counter-attacking. And has Goody seen this? I think he, he must have done, he's pulling back. He must have caught a glimpse of it somewhere. He is in a good position to defend against it right now. One changeling is going to be scouting up here to see where the army is. It's going to get annihilated really quickly, so he does know where the army is about right now. The scan does catch most of that army, and Minato's hand has been shown, and he's got to run home right now, because Goody might caught, cut him off if he's uh, not too careful. Yep, if he's not too careful, he will he will get in a bad spot. But luckily on Daybreak, you've got lots of different exit paths, which we're just seeing Minato utilize those at the moment, giving Goody a bit of a runaround. And oh, well, Goody's just chasing these units. It's giving Minato a chance to get out some Vipers, get more upgrades, and generally be pretty fine and dandy. So with these coming together, ultimately Minato's aim is just secure these bases, get the Vipers out, and get ready for some good blinding clouds and if he can do that as we've seen in a mm -hmm. couple of games this series he will win blinding clouds destroy siege tanks and ultimately goody's army composition is completely reliant on those siege tanks doing the majority of the <coughs> damage while being shielded by the hellbats mm -hmm. yeah we're we're gonna have to criticize goody a little bit too i feel um he has not really been spreading his units as well i mean all his siege tanks are mostly in one place and can get caught by like two or three blinding clouds to cover all the siege tanks. If Goody spreads the siege tanks out a little bit more, as he's doing right now, it's going to take a lot more blinding clouds to completely shut those siege tanks down. So Goody is adapting his play, he is doing what he should do, and spreading out his siege tanks more. I mean, look at the siege tank spread right now, Maddox. That would take like six blinding clouds to, to stop them all from shooting. But then likewise, if you're engaging from the side, then you can get some blinding clouds down on a couple and knock out the tanks that are actually the threat to you. But mm -hmm. it is going to be a tough position because ultimately the ramp that Goody's likely to come down is the one to the right of his main force at the moment. And if he goes down there, he's going to engage a lot of those tanks. The other option though for Minato is, it's a bit of a short-term solution, but try and get some abducts down on a few of the tanks to knock them out quickly. But no, he's going to go for it. He gets some blinding clouds there straight away, only stopping a couple of tanks though. But will it be enough? We can see the Hydra is doing a nice amount of damage here, picking out a large majority of the infantry. A couple of Seeker Missiles being used. Really nice positioning of those Seeker Missiles. And now the Blinding Clouds wear off. Goody will defend this incredibly nicely. Minato down to, well, just under half the supply of his opponent. And Goody is actually now looking to be in a much more comfortable spot this game. Yeah, this time around, the Blinding Clouds were not good enough. The Siege Tanks were spread, the units were spread. Goody was entrenched with his Missile Turrets there in a fantastic position. The Missile Turrets took down the Vipers as they went overhead to go for the Blinding Clouds. Uh, only a few of them actually hit home, but not really enough. And Minato's going to have one more shot, and that's going to be his greatest fire play. He's going to have the Broodlords out, but he doesn't really have as much gas as he would like. He only has 600 gas in the bank right now to morph Broodlords. And... and yeah, that's not a huge amount of gas to do much on, but he no. is taking that center base. He can get all the way up to 10 gas very quickly, and when he does that, he will have a decent gas income. But Goody, 
the one concern I've got for Goody at the moment is he's only got those eight Vikings. He's not producing any more, and therefore this switch into Broodlords could catch him a little bit off guard, especially if we keep a couple of Corruptors around just in order to deal with the more Vikings. If we get some Ultras in there in the composition additionally, then you suddenly start ending up with a very scary Death Ball force, but the supply count says a lot. Goody is still a long way ahead just in sheer number of units on the field and he's sacrificing SCVs to just free up even more supply. Yep, there they go. Some SCVs being sent through the slaughterhouse. They are gonna go down. Minuto has been giving the time though. I mean, Goody is giving him time to get his gases up. He's got five five bases gas mining right now. That's really good for Minato, so he is going to be able to max out once more. And that gives him a chance, at least a chance. He is down pretty far, I'd say, compared to Goody, who is completely maxed out and hasn't lost a lot. He's dropping a little bit, doing some uh, worker harassment damage here. But really, worker harassment, it doesn't really matter that much this late into the game. 11 workers killed by Minato. Goody only killed four workers this entire game, so the economy for Minato has pretty much gone unchecked. Yeah, it has, and that's why he's sitting comfortably up at 80 drones. He's mining off of those 10 gas, and now he's just going to be building up a huge bank. He's nearly maxed out again. He's getting some investors down. He's got the Broodlords, he's got the Corruptors, getting the upgrades all together. SCV is just getting sacrificed because Goody needs as much supply into an army as possible. The one thing, though, is that if this Broodlord count does start going unchecked, that is when Goody could be running into a massive amount of pain. And ultimately, that's why he's sacrificing these SCVs to get more Vikings out. He needs a really good Viking count. Yeah, his Viking count is getting there, though. Already at 14. 14 Vikings versus 9 Corruptors and 4 Broodlords up in the air. So about 1 per 1 right now. Wants to make a few more. So 4 more Vikings, 2 more Ravens on the way. Continuously sacrificing SCVs. He was really high in the SCV count. He was over 80 at the start. Now he's finally getting down to a more acceptable level for the late game, which is uh, around 50. Might even argue that 40 is good enough in the late game. Yeah, when it's... it's. I mean, the thing is, you just got to be able to deal the damage quickly enough, so... I mean, I'm just looking at the moment that the upgrades are starting to kick in. We've got plus three. Um, well, sorry, the kindness plating is done, and only plus one ground carapace. Plus two ground carapace and plus one melee attack getting researched. So in that regard, the Broodlords and Ultras aren't going to be hitting as hard as obviously Minotaur would want. Goody though, he's doing really nicely. 3-2 upgrades are done, plus 3 mech armor is half completed. And with all of these things piecing together, actually, we're getting quite comfortably into a spot where Goody needs to move out. And I can't help but feel that he's given Minotaur just so much time to do whatever he wants to. And Goody isn't gaining much from leaving it that long. No, he's just getting weird upgrades, like, um, I think he just finished the building armor upgrade, which is, you know, it's weird, but not that weird. If he would have if he would have had a planetary fortress in the middle of the map, it would have been even more understandable, making it even more durable against the, the Zerg attacks, but he doesn't. It's actually, does he even have a single planetary fortress out on the map? Well, look at all those orbital commands, man, and it's in third base. That is one, two, three, four orbital commands there, and another three command centers going down. He has <laughs> ten orbital commands. Oh, yay for the structures tab. Yeah, 10 orbital commands. That is, that's pretty baller. He likes mules. Like, if he called down all the mules at once, all we just see is a mule party. If they all danced as well, that would be epic. Like, if Goody just decided, hey, I don't care about winning this game, I just want to get to front page of Reddit, mm -hmm. that's all he'd have to do. Yeah, that's all he had to do, like dropping mules out of, <laughs> out of nowhere. That would be uh, a lot of fun to see. We see Neural Parasite now going down. That's noteworthy. The rest of the things that are happening are not really noteworthy as much. We see Goody switching into more and more Ravens. He continues to uh, sacrifice SCVs. He's now down to 36, which um, I just talked about, you know, around 40 is a good amount to be at in the late game. He's going to sacrifice even a few more. Actually, no, they, these are Hellbats, not SCVs. They're just clearing creep. Yeah, they're just, well, happily clearing the creep away. Minato is now at 208 of 200 supply. He's desperately trying to get all of the upgrades down, but so is Goody. Goody even getting high sec auto tracking. That is that is the point of the game we're at now. This is super late game. We're approaching the 30 minute mark, and of course everything on the line for Goody. If he loses this map, he loses the series and Minato wins. So that's why they're both being so passive. And arguably this is one of the criticisms of Daybreak and why it's been removed. Because you can split the map down the middle, just as we're seeing now, and both players can turtle up forever. 
and you're left with two players sitting doing not very much, two casters desperately trying to fill airtime, and a lot of viewers watching and patiently waiting for one big engagement. But when that big engagement comes down, it almost certainly will decide who wins or loses this map. And the one thing that Goody's doing nice is that he's still trying to harass, he's still trying to get some drops off, and that's really all you can do in this situation. Yeah, he's, he's placing missile turrets everywhere, he's claiming creep as much as he can. Scan after scan after scan goes down. The Brutalord army, of course, somewhat, actually more than just somewhat, super immobile. The queens are immobile, the investors are immobile of creep. So clearing creep is really going to increase his chances of winning this game. And as we can see, these uh, Hellbats have got 9, 6, and 18 kills. And I think all of those are creep kills. Yeah, they're just happily working their way through. It's not like with basically 12 orbit commands now, Goody has to be lenient and reserved with how he spends those scans, so he can just happily push it all back. This also opens up the ability to go for some little counter pushes up towards the top base, but here we see Minato desperately just sneaking forward. He's got a lot of spore callers there. He's just really trying his utmost to secure more bases, but Goody, he's been maxed out for so long. He has pretty much every upgrade he could ever want, and these two are just slowly edging closer and closer and could we be about to get a big engagement? I think we are. Here goes Goody. He's going forward. A few Googles are out of position. One falls pretty quickly. Some Seeker missiles get locked on but they don't really hit much of anything there. The Hellbats go in. Oh, those corruptors have to be careful. There's a lot of Thors here. A lot of AOE air damage is being done. Here come the Seeker missiles. It's all going to be about those and they're going to hit home really well. Oh my god. Oh, all the huge hits. All the good lots of battle. Wow. That were some six Seeker hit missile hits, and the Siege Tanks are still alive in the background. Minato is going to have to remax really quickly here. Yeah, the Chain Fungals, though, are absolutely brilliant as well, managing to take out a good chunk of the Vikings, but you were completely right, Lillian. Those Seeker missiles were epic. They were so good, precisely where they needed to be, all connecting. The Corruptors melted, and now, as you rightly pointed out, it's all about Minato remaxing. He's getting 34 muters. I cannot stress enough what a good decision that is because the upgrades, air upgrades, are currently 3-1. Those muters are going to do so much damage and with very little anti-air on the field now for Goody, what's he going to do about that? He's got a couple of missile turrets, but they will fall so quickly to that number of muters. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Cav. There's a lot of Ravens here and they've got a lot of Seeker missiles in store, but they die before they can even get the Seeker missiles off. Goody was not expecting this. He gets one really good Seeker missile there and almost all the Mutas die instantly. I was not in agreement with this switch at all of the Mutas. He is, though, doing some damage in the main base with some Zerglings and, yeah, that was basically 3,000 gas worth of Mutas dead in one shot of a raid. Now my, my issue with that is those muters could have been so good in my opinion, but you can't just fly them directly over a big group of missile turrets, Thors, Vikings and Ravens and basically aim move it. You've got to be using them to mm -hmm. poke around, take out this bottom of expansion and then actually you're not in a bad spot. Just leave Goody mining out the center and just outlast him and you can do that. But if you just fly straight into a big group of things that can kill you, then it's not gonna it's not gonna work cost effectively. Mm-hmm. It's true. But I still don't agree with the Muta switch. I mean there were Vikings, there were uh, a lot of Ravens, there were a lot of Thors out on the field. Why would you go for the Mutas? I don't really know. He threw away three thousand gas doing that. I think he would have been would have had way more luck remaxing on Investor Ultra Link than he would have had with the Mutas. I mean they they killed a few Ravens, but that was about it. How is he going to do with his second Remax though? His last Remax of this game is going to be in the Oculus. Yep, here we go. Some new Parasites being used. Nice choice here. Actually allowing Goody to, to take out quite a good chunk of his own army. But just look at this siege line. So many there. So many Ravens. Auto turrets getting thrown down. And Minato, he's going to lose his bottom base. He's desperate to try and get out some more units. but. He's low in his bank, he's got 26, 28 now speed links coming down, two ultralisks. I just don't see this being enough. Goody's at 150 supply, he's got a nice bank, he's got a lot of mining bases, a lot of mules, and he's pumping units. Yeah, and a nice bank is a bit of an overstatement, I think. The bank for Goody is, he has a bank. That is something that Minato does not. He's got 200 minerals and 260 gas to his name right now. He's gonna have to trying to make as many ultralisks as he possibly can and try to catch small portions of army out of position. He's going to get the mewling base here. 
That's gonna be more mules dead in a matter of five seconds than I've ever seen in my life. Yep, straight away that gets knocked out very quickly, but Goody did manage to get a decent amount of income there. Look at Minato's bank. He's completely broke, and that's what's mm, causing him a problem because ultimately Goody has more army supply. He's got a very powerful army, and he does still have that bottom and center base. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Minato definitely on the back foot right now. Goody continuing to extend his lead here. He's currently maxed out and he's starting to build a bank again. Whereas Minato, he is scrambling for resources. He needs to max out one more time and hope to convincingly win the engagement with that because he will not be able to uh, do very well in the long run. His base, of course, in the middle of the map got shut down. So Goody now has the same amount of bases as his opponent. So. Where do we go from here? This game is now approaching the 40 minute mark, so really, really late stages. Minato has just been allowed so many opportunities to remax, it's untrue. And the one that's the one thing I think Goody could aim to improve upon, is that he gets a good engagement and then sits back. Even when he is maxed out, what is he waiting for now? Ultimately, if he pushed when he first got back up to 200-200, he could have really been a nightmare for Minato, but by waiting, all he's doing is letting Minato go get up more units, and there's not really a benefit, as far as I can see, of Goody waiting. No, there's not. So he's getting the last upgrade that he has not researched in this game, or pretty close to. I don't think he got any ghost upgrades, but other than that, he's got a lot of them under his belt. He didn't get any of the upgrades on the factory either, but in terms of uh, armor upgrades, attack upgrades, and most of the upgrades that you can get from the engineering bay, he's researched them, you know, the high sec auto tracking has gone down and uh, the building armor has gone down. Just the Neo Steel frame remaining that he hasn't researched. And of course the bio upgrades, which he's completely left alone. He's, he's goody, he doesn't play bio, he plays mech. Like when everyone, when everyone says to goody, marines good units, he's just like, what are marines bro? It's just like, do you make them out of a factory? And they're like, no, and goody's like, oh. Don't use him. And he, he does it to such success, well, a lot of success, because we see here, he is just starting to move forward, but Minato is remaxed out. And this is the problem, that if you are allowed to remax... No! Then... Oh no, is he actually going to attack into this model? So he's going to try oh. Minato's last ditch after the lot of... Oh my god, this is never going to work, is it? Minato is going to get evaporated here by the Thors in the back. They're all still alive. The... Queens are still alive in the background, they're trying to transfuse, but they cannot because everything's getting one shot. GG gets called and Goody, he is not down, he is not out, he is fighting back and the series is now 4-3. to three. Goody still down a game, still match point for Minato, but only one game away from tying the series up is Goody.